All right, guys, so this is a video on how to do some things to spruce up your Pong game. So at the beginning here, I'm going to start off with a pre-constructed game. Everything about this game has been done exactly as the tutorial is, has, has told us to. Now, with that said, when I hit the green flag, did you see that? The ball just kind of glitched and it glitched, and now the game is starting. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to add some things to the game and how to get rid of some of the more lame glitches that pop up. Like for example, right now I can just keep that paddle still and that ball is just bouncing around to the exact same spots over and over again. Game is not very interesting for the user at this point. So let's get to it. For starters, the ball, if it's starting off in the red lava and I hit the green flag, it's barely moving. That's because the ball's location needs to be reset. And the basic tutorial doesn't show us this. So what we're going to do, we go down here, we're going to make sure we click on our ball, and we're going to come over here and go to X and Y. And we're going to add this in when the green flag is clicked. All three of these things, go to X, Y, set score to zero, and point and direction are going to happen right off the bat. And I could move the ball somewhere. And you'll notice if I move the ball, it changes my coordinates over here. The go to X is now negative 3 and 46. I move the ball here, it's now negative 40 and 74. Um, also, because it's an X and Y axis, we could also just type in 0, 0. And then when we start the game, the ball starts in the exact middle every single time. Okay, so that's a way to reset the ball's location. Now, the, the, the ball is always going off in the exact same direction, and that's how we're able to do this thing where we can just keep the paddle in one single location and nothing ever changes. So let's add some variation into where the ball goes. We had a point in the direction of 45. What if we went negative 45 245 instead. Let's create a range. Um, in our green operators here, we'll click on our green operators button, pick random 1 to 10, bring this over, and fill that slot in. So you see if I hold the left side there, it makes a little white highlight around 45. If I bring the other side in, it doesn't do that. So bring in the left side, it snaps in, and we're going to go negative 45 to positive 45. As we saw on the angle, that means kind of a diagonal up to the left to a diagonal up to the right. And now when we start our game, the ball is going into a bunch of different directions, which adds more unpredictability for the player, makes the game a little more interesting because the game plays slightly different every single time you start it. All right, next thing. Um, when we're playing the game here, the paddle, um, if we accidentally bump or move it, the paddle is also going to change location. So. What we want the paddle to do is um, always be able to move left to right, but not top to bottom. So the player, let's say they were inside your game and they accidentally moved the paddle. When they hit the green flag, the paddle's still going to be there at that height. So if I move that paddle up here, hit the green flag, now the paddle's up here. So let's give the paddle a defined line or a defined location as well. So I'll put the paddle about where I want it. I'll put it mm, right about here so that the ball, even if the ball went halfway through the paddle, it's still not going to touch the lava. I could probably bring this down just a little bit. All right, now I could take my paddle's Y location, negative 143, and I'm going to set the Y. So under motion here, there's go to, and then there's also set. So we told to the mouse to set um, to the X position, but the Y, we can set it to negative 143, and then no matter where we put that paddle, when we restart the game, it snaps back down to the bottom. All right, next thing. Let's go ahead and add some animation for the ball. The ball comes in with multiple costumes, right? So those five costumes, um, we could do something fun, like, for example, every single time we touch the ball, instead of it just staying yellow, we could do something like have it change its costume. We go to looks, we go to next costume here. So on the ball, I have this if touching paddle, then change score by one. What if I also put in next costume as well? And then every time I hit the ball, it changes costume. Um, you could also do something like this. Instead of putting it in there, we could have, whoops, I'll put that back the way it was. We could put the costume in a forever loop. And if you want to get that like strobe-like effect out of it. To me, that's a little jarring. Um, so I'm going to put that in here. I'm just going to have the ball change each time it touches. Okay. Um, now, what if we wanted to 
do something different like add in multiple levels of difficulty. So on the ball, forever it moves 15 steps and if on edge bounces. I'm going to take that out and instead I'm going to put in the control here, if then else. And what this does is if a condition is true, we're going to do something. Otherwise, it's going to do something else. So in here, I'm going to put my move 15 steps and if on edge bounce inside of there. And under sensing, I'm sorry, operators rather, I'm going to put in this little green operator. Something is less than something else. Make sure it's not the greater than. Make sure you got less than here. And what we're going to look for is under our variables, let's bring in our score. Here's our score. Let's say if our score is less than five, then we'll move at 15 steps. And if on edge bounce, um, then let's see, what should we put in for the else? What if I duplicated this and put this in again? So I right clicked on it to duplicate it. Only this time I'm going to increase the score to 10 and 20. And you could do this in whatever increments you wanted to. I could do it again, duplicate. Let's make this 15 and 25. And then if you get to the final point where you're like, OK, we can't go any faster. This is ridiculous. We could always do one of these um, move 10 steps. And if on edge bounce, let's change this to 30. So that'll be like our final speed. If we get over 15 points, then the game gets really fast. Let's stop it, restart it. OK, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you see the ball got faster. Eight, nine, 10. OK, now the ball's really cooking. 13, 14, 15. OK, and now it's getting really fast until it gets to the point I lose. So that's a way to increase speed. Now, what you did notice, though, is that I was just moving the paddle back and forth to the same locations, and I wasn't ever having to really change anything. So how do we fix that problem? The same way we fix the point in direction, we can also apply that to when the ball bounces off of the paddle. So in here, we have turn 180 degrees. If I put this in to pick random instead, instead of 180 degrees, what if I decrease that by about mm, 25? So 180 minus 25 would be 155. And what's 180 plus 25? 205. And now when I hit the, the ball, instead if it's forcing the ball to go in new kind of weird directions. See that? And now the game's getting harder and harder. OK, last thing. Let's add in some um, music. So how about when the green flag is clicked, we pull in some sound. And we'll do the play sound or, or start sound pop. And I'm going to put this into a green flag. And I'm going to put a forever loop onto it. But instead of pop, I want something that's better. Um, oops, sorry about the background noise there. So here is my backpack. I already pulled in some sounds from other Scratch projects by going to them, clicking on sprites, and like dragging sounds into my backpack. Because of that, I pulled in a bunch of songs. So in my sounds here, I have the pop and the boing here. I'm going to get rid of those. Let's pull it in another song here. Um, Let's do this one. All right, we'll come back here to our code. So when the green flag is clicked, forever, we'll play the song, never going to give you up. And when I play, what we can do, let's see if that works. Oh, and you know why? Because I did the start song. Um, forever, instead, what I'm going to do is go to my, whoops, code, sound. Because I used the just start sound, it was trying to start it forever. Instead, I'm going to play this one until it's done. Let's see if that works. There we go. And now you have a fully functional game with some enhancements. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Um, take care.